The way things are organized within your domain is in organizational units, which is always called OUs, and in containers. A container is actually created by default. So when you install Active Directory, you're going to have several containers that just exist. But they can be used to group objects within a domain. A key takeaway, or the most important thing about a container, is you cannot apply group policy objects to containers. Now, we have not yet discussed group policy objects or GPOs, but a GPO stands for group policy object. We do get more into that later. What this allows me to do is apply policies to users and computers. But those policies cannot be applied to a container. Containers are just used for default objects. So the objects that exist when Active Directory is just initially created, most of those objects will exist in containers. Now, a container is just a folder icon. So that's what it's going to look like when you're in Active Directory. Our organizational units, we will create these on our own. The biggest difference between the container and an organizational unit is you can assign these group policy objects or GPOs at the OU level. You can also delegate administrative permission. Now, one way to think of this, let's say you have an organizational unit. So I'm going to call it an OU. And you name this OU RTS Computers. You can create a child OU under this named Laptops. You can create a child OU, uh, well, another child OU under it named Desktops. With these policies, you can apply a policy at any of these levels. So I could have a policy here. I'm just gonna write GPO for group policy object. Now let's say you have a policy that sets wallpaper, as in like the background on your computer. That is gonna apply all the way through this structure. So now all my laptops and all my desktops are gonna have the same exact wallpaper. But let's say some other settings. For example, Wi-Fi. You need all your laptops to be configured for Wi-Fi, but your desktops use a physical cable, like an Ethernet cable. You could have a GPO that applies to the laptop's OU, and in it, you define all your Wi-Fi settings, but it only applies directly to the laptop's OU. If you have other settings that need to apply only to your desktop computers, you apply it here. So you have some GPO here just for desktops. Now, when you join a computer to the domain, you would have your laptops, they would be in this location you would have your desktops be in this location or this organizational unit. You could do the same on the user side. You have an organization unit for sales users. You apply policies to that sales users need. You have an organizational unit for marketing users. All the policies that marketing users need would apply to that OU. The delegate permission is truly a form of, well, the name kind of gives it away, but administrative delegation. Well, let's say you have an OU for managers. You have another OU for, we'll say, sales. Well, what I want, I have a group named Help Desk. We talked about groups a moment ago, simplify, assign, and permissions. But let's say in my group, we have all the users that work on the Help Desk as a member of this group. We've decided this initial tier of the help desk should not be able to reset passwords for managers, but they should be able to reset passwords for sales users. Then I would simply delegate at the sales OU level, reset password to this help desk group, but it's done at the sales OU. 
So we're assuming all my sales users, their account is in the sales OU. So now when you delegate the help desk group, the ability to reset passwords, it only applies if your user account is in the sales OU. So just a way to delegate who can manage what within your Active Directory structure.